So today we start a three week journey in Kenya. We got a group of nine people that are gonna be here. Most of us for three weeks, but some of us are leaving after two weeks. We'll let them introduce themselves to you. Randall Taylor, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I build lumber mills. Mary Martin, I'm retired and I'm from Iowa. Um, Dana Garnett uh, from Iowa and I work on a farm and I worked at a restaurant as a server. Hi, I'm Esther Tamling Seffrood and I'm from Wisconsin, just recently moved to Lynchburg, Virginia and I love Jesus and I love telling people about Jesus. Bonnie Sukkermatty from Manitoba, Canada and I am the secretary at my church. Phoebe Hainer, and I'm from Wisconsin, and I do school for a living. <laughs> and if you've followed this vlog, you know who she is. She's the star of the show. Woo! Yep. Okay, hi, I'm Pat Bobolic. I'm from the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. Anything else? What you do for a living? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My name is Shadrach Schuler. I'm from Wisconsin, and I'm a marathon cook. So you'll be seeing a lot more from all these guys. I just want you to know who they are as we go through the week and have a chance to see them in action. So a lot of times when people think about going overseas to serve Jesus, they they have a lot of hesitation. They think it's for other people or they're not ready yet or how can, on earth could I ever get the money or you know, there's relationship challenges, all kinds of stuff. And everybody who's here on this trip faced challenges like that. So I want you to hear today some of the challenges that they faced and how Jesus worked in their life as they took steps of faith to overcome that. Number one challenge probably would have been, was financially, just to make sure that got lined up. Yeah, God was in this where uh, I was. I had a promotion at work, <laughs> so then finances were coming, and I moved out on the road. It had increased my income as well because of my per diem allowance, and I was able to save a lot of that through tent camping, staying at a shelter, and and just living. Uh, very efficiently. So this guy took a step of faith to go on a mission trip. God gave him a promotion, gave him a job uh, shift that included a per diem. And then this yahoo started uh, saving up his per diem. And now he's got money coming out of his ears for this mission trip. <laughs> I do. I, I also did um, campaign and promoted and a lot of people sewed in. I, at first, I, I was nervous about that. I, I don't know, I guess I just needed to get humble. And, and, you know, I wanted to be able to do it myself. And I was encouraged to ask some people. And then once I started, that really just snowballed into uh, a lot of people sewed in and a lot of people to think. If I, if I tried to do a roll call, I would forget everyone. I was saved and sober living in a homeless shelter almost seven years ago. And so I was able to bring that love and hope of Jesus Christ to them people through my testimony and save money. So it was just, it was just beautiful. The whole thing has really developed into more than I could ever imagine or expect. So it sounds like this guy isn't just a missionary in Kenya. It sounds like this guy's living on mission. So he just took that lifestyle and brought it overseas. Yes. Well, I think everyone thinks about money and that's definitely been a factor. Uh, my wife was working at a consignment store and uh, she said uh, uh, there was a group of, a team of people running around the city with uh, all like orange shirts and uh, they came in and were looking for people to pray with and to bless and uh, when she told them about the, the mission trip, they returned later on and donated a, a pretty considerable amount of money to the trip and, and we didn't know them at all. So that was that was a miracle. This guy stepped out in faith to come on this mission trip and God sent a mission team into his wife's work to bless her and then they found out about him and they came back and they had made a collection and he sent people to give a donation without even being asked. Isn't that crazy? had any apprehensions about coming. Um, I think it's been in my heart for a long time to do a mission trip. I never thought it was going to be possible. 
And then when this opportunity presented itself, I just, you know, I've heard so much about the, the African people and the culture, and I said, you know, I just want to experience God through these people. Just the support of everyone and the encouragement. I've been really encouraged. Um, I have just felt the prayer coverage. There he goes. Yes, thank you. So the hotel that we're staying at, the, the road is reserved for bus traffic. We have to hire a cart to take all of our luggage. I was going to catch my This is what missionary work looks like a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. Sitting around, wondering what's going on, waiting. know how we were gonna afford it because we moved from Wisconsin in the last three weeks we've moved from Wisconsin to Lynchburg Virginia and our house is for sale and it hasn't sold yet and so I'm like Lord how is this gonna happen when Bill gave us two weeks notice and quit his job to start the job in Virginia um, there was 2,000 extra dollars for just what I needed, right? For his last paycheck. I couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. It's like, how did that happen? Well, God is good. out of my comfort zone so yeah just like not being afraid like feeling confident and feeling good in myself so what do you think of Kenya so far it's great I don't think about the challenges I am surprised I'm on this mission trip <laughs> and the things that kept me going was just not listening to the voices that said why well, you shouldn't be going a friend of mine that I've known for years through homeschooling she had an impromptu 4th of July party. I met so many people there that had been to Kenya and had the answers for what I needed, what I was looking for, um, and things that I didn't even know to look for. And it was huge. It was just person after person after person after person. And that, that was just really big. So I know that God put that whole 4th of July party together just for me. All right. What do you have to say about Kenyan toilets? <laughs> Let's just say I can't wait to get back to America and go to the bathroom. Are you going to hold it till then? No. <laughs> you going to hold it for three weeks? No. Some of them are not the best thing. I mean, I already lost my sunglasses in them already. <laughs> Jay, 
I just toss it to him? Okay, yeah, I uh, heard about this trip in March, I believe, and wanted to go because I've always wanted to be, go to Africa, but I didn't want to say anything to anybody because I was afraid I'd be disappointed and I wouldn't be able to go, so I couldn't bear that, so I didn't say anything for a long time. And then eventually mentioned some friends and it was like everyone I mentioned, she said, you gotta go, you gotta do this. And, and so then I said yes. And then um, I heard the Lord say to me quite clearly not to fundraise. And that was hard for me because I'm really good at fundraising. And so I was like kind of begging him, please let me, because I'd wake up in the morning and think these awesome ideas. And he'd be like, um, hold on a second, remember what I said. And so I had to just lay that down and trust him for the money and it was really cool because when I went to get my money for my three weeks um, I was $250 short but I got it anyway and then since then another $450 has come in so he was very faithful and helped me get all my money and that was pretty awesome so um, and also in the process of coming um, I've had a lot of things that I've been working through and dealing with and he's been very faithful in those things as well and it almost felt like Saying yes to this trip to Africa wasn't just saying yes to Africa, it was saying yes to um, changing a lot of the hard things in my life and um, changing the way that I dealt with those hard things. And so it's been a pretty amazing journey already. So this is like the icing on the cake for me. Look, nobody is saying it, that you have to come on a mission trip in order to fulfill the Great Commission. What we are saying is that everybody faces challenges. Don't let those stop you from what God can do through you and in you. Everybody here faced challenges in their circumstances, in their finances, and had to take steps of faith. But as they did, they saw God do amazing things. If you're enjoying these full speed blogs, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks a lot. So any advice for future world travelers? Don't wear your sunglasses in the bathroom. And... Welcome. Welcome. Karim Mustana, Karim Mustana.